you should be able to see the <clears throat> see the screen and uh, sound should be fine. If you want to link link to what you see on the screen to the actual uh, web page, there's that. Um, we'll dive into the markets here in just a moment. Um, but uh, what you see on the screen is something we've been, I know I've been wanting to uh, launch for a long time, but uh, between agreements and legal issues, um, I've been very blocked uh, from doing this. So um, it's been a long time trying to kind of remove those barriers, and now we have. So um, these are uh, live, the uh, live sessions and got good stuff happening every day here. So anyway, there's that. If you want to spend um, uh, time with us each day, that is, uh, that's the, the new membership there. And uh, we cover stocks, futures, Forex, options, all that, crypto. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, just type them in the chat. And um, let's dive into today's topic. Okay, whoops. There we go. Where is the market going? So we're going to focus on the stock market, but we could certainly focus on any markets. If you have markets you want to uh, look at, um, feel free to type them in the chat. All right, so we'll start with the stock markets, the major equity index markets, and um, we'll go from there. We will apply the supply and demand strategy, and um, and when I say that, remember the uh, we. I know there's multiple versions of the supply demand strategy out there now. A lot of people have added indicators and oscillators and trend and all this stuff. In these sessions, we focus on the real original uh, supply demand strategy. So, um, if you have any questions on that strategy rules anything just type them in the chat but we want to apply those rules and uh, go over where the equity index markets are likely to turn and where they're likely to move to so if we start with the the s p here okay, and these are all zones a lot of these zones we've gone over in these out in these uh, sessions and then from here we go to forex or whatever you want but um Currently, we'll start with maybe the smaller picture view for those that are actively trading or swing trading. And, um, and then we'll go to bigger picture. Make sure you understand, too, that all of this, uh, you know, for those that are new to this, for those that have experience, make sure you clearly understand the risk involved with trading. Remember, we've gone over this many times. The majority of active traders lose money trading. So no one's pushing you to trade your own accounts. Just make sure you understand what you're doing before you dive in. So we just turned at uh, a supply zone we've been dealing with now for days. Um, and that supply zone is not likely to hold up again. And that area, when we look at the S&P, and we're going to go to the NASDAQ here and the NASDAQ. Same thing. They all have the same supply zone uh, just sitting there. And now we've gone fairly deep into that supply zone, suggesting many of the sell orders that are sitting there are filled. Okay. So the next move up to that area is you're, we're likely to see price go through that. Um, however, when we see what's sitting kind of just above all that, we go over here. Now we're looking uh, same S and P, you know, futures. Um, but we're looking at in this screenshot. Now this is a live market; it's not a screenshot. But what we're looking at here is um, just above that those areas. Okay. So likely to have more supply sitting just above the, uh, uh, when we get up into the, the 4,100 area. 
If you're wondering what this line is right here, I'm going to show you that. Um, that's in, This is an area, this is a, a demand zone that's sitting right down here. You don't see it on this chart because we're looking at the, the day session S&P here. But if we go to the, um, the S&P chart that includes the overnight session, you'll see that sitting um, just below, there's that area. Uh, this is what that line represented. So currently, and this is not a high probability demand zone, the higher probability demand zone is down below 3,900, um, certainly below last week's lows. That's where the high probability demand zones come in. But before that, um, likely to see a bounce at the 3,972, but that bounce is likely to stall out and prices are likely to turn lower up here once we get above 4100. Does that make sense? So this is more of a swing trading slash active trading uh, supply demand view of the S&P. Now in the, uh, in the bigger picture, okay, when we go to some large time frames of the S&P, for example, uh, oh, let's do that in the SPY. So let's look at the SPY, which is the ETF for the S&P. For those who are new at this, if you want to trade the S&P as a stock, this is the market for that. This is the SPY. Now, if we go to the big picture, right, we've looked at this many times. Uh, we just had a kind of big turn, at, or a big bounce, I should say, not turn, big bounce at the the uh, 393.50 up here okay sitting below that would be the uh the 361 area um this would be the next fresh demand zone below that the next time we come down here there are other demand zones um, in here and uh, i can show you one of those Now, even though, here's something a lot of people don't focus on, and it can be a real advantage to both making money and not losing money or losing less, right, and not making mistakes, in other words. So we have the S&P, NASDAQ, Russell, Dow, Nikkei, the DAX, all these major equity index markets, stock markets around the world. And we don't look at one market or another um, and and say, okay, price is going to turn here because of that demand zone and there because of that supply zone in the S&P, for example. What we do is, um, well, let me just show you. So another piece of evidence where demand is likely to be. So I just showed you, if we go below last week's low in the S&P, there's a demand zone sitting, you know, a bit lower. But if we go below last week's low in the Nikkei, there's a demand zone sitting right there. In the NASDAQ, it's a little bit lower than this. But the bottom line is if we go below last week's low, um, that will be that will put us in the territory that, in other words, the, the most of the world will get very bearish if that happens. Very bearish. And if we do that, uh, or it, right, if that happens right into an area where demand exceeds supply, that's where you can get a really strong turn to the upside. Okay. Does that make sense? And now we haven't even looked at the NASDAQ yet, so let's go over here. These are all, uh, you know, fairly weak. Just, I mean, we're all, this is all within the week's range here, so not not a big deal. Um, we've been down here. So we look at the NASDAQ, and we looked at this zone already, right? Again, there's that test, very tested supply zone at this point. 
Uh, full disclosure, we actually took our profits into the supply zone yesterday from the move from down in here. We always try to share positions we're in when we when we can. But anyway, uh, so we've turned lower from that supply zone there. That supply zone is not likely to hold up again. And when we go to the, like we did with the S&P, when we go to the day session chart of the NASDAQ, just like the S&P, we have a supply zone sitting just above in the uh, 12760 area. Okay. So there's that. Now let's uh, move over to the demand side in the NASDAQ. Here we're going to look at two different charts. So just like with the S&P, we looked at a swing trading point of view, where markets are likely, where the S&P is likely to turn, where it's likely to move to. And then we looked at the bigger picture, where is price likely to turn, where is likely, likely to move to. And we're going to do that with the NASDAQ now. So we look at the supply side. On the demand side, if we take out last week's low, which is very likely, okay, the next qualified demand zone, um, looking here would be around the 11,294 area. Okay. And um, when we look at last week's low, last week's low was right into our demand zone. But notice how deep it went into the demand zone. So price is likely to move uh, lower from there. Okay, That's not likely to hold. Having said that, I want to take you to um, this chart, go back to the NASDAQ here. We do have a smaller time frame demand zone before we get to last week's lows. That's around 11,971 area. And then we go to the Qs, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ. So if you want to trade the NASDAQ as a stock, this is the symbol you would use. Okay, QQQ, that's the, uh, this, this is the NASDAQ. Here, like the NASDAQ futures, like the S&P, uh, if we do move higher, the 314 areas where we're likely to see uh, the next turn lower, and that would be above, uh, you know, the highs of this week and last week. Okay, and then on the demand side, um, just like the NASDAQ futures, if we take out last week's low, that really brings us down to the 275, just confirm that, yeah, the 275 area down in here, where we have two demand zones uh, right on top of each other. Subham, I'm, uh, Subham, I'm not sure I understand your question. When you're saying, when you see price come out of the supply zone, uh, like, uh, like it's doing here, Let me go back here and I'll, I'll see if I understand what you're asking. Do you mean like this initial drop out of the supply zone? Like how much does it have to move away for this to become a qualified supply zone? Uh, is that what you're asking? Oh, I think that is what you're asking. Um, yeah, so a, typically a good rule for that is at least two to one, meaning whatever the size of the supply zone uh, from top to bottom, it, you know, the market you want to move at least twice that. But what's equally important, if not more important, is we want to make sure that if there's any demand in the area, that that demand be uh, taken out. Let me, or the opposing zone, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So I'm pretty sure it's, there it is. So on this chart, you see how we have a blue circle here? Some of you might be thinking, what does that blue circle mean? Well, a blue circle is not a qualified zone yet. The, um, the blue circle means that this is a zone that, that, is, that uh, might be developing or is developing, but it hasn't officially qualified yet. 
Okay. So in other words, for this zone to actually qualify, see prices in there now. Could it turn that higher? It could, right? Very easily could. We could turn here and go back up to the highs, you know, up, up to here. Um, and that would be a decent size move because this is like four, almost 409 here. Okay. But um but before we would be interested buyers at this demand zone, see this stuff over here? And let me take you to a different time for frame where it might be a little more clear. Okay. This right up here. So right now, the profit zone for this potential area of demand is only up to here. And that's not much. Okay. So you got 413 on the supply side, basically right in here, 40250 on the demand side. So if that's enough of a profit zone, according to your rules, fine, uh, but that's really not that much. And remember, this is very important. Profit zone and probability go hand in hand. The larger the profit zone, typically the higher the probability. Okay. The logic behind that is, remember we talk about supply, demand, and fair value, that middle that's so important, right? So um, the further price gets away from fair value, in other words, the further price gets away from fair value and out to supply and demand zones that are away from fair value, those are the higher probability turning points because the supply demand imbalances are larger out there. Does that make sense? So that's why profit zone and probability go hand in hand. Okay. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? All right, so let's move on from that. So again, we would need this supply zone to be taken out before this becomes a, because, because what, let, let's say that that happens. Let's say price goes, goes up and, um, let's say price goes up and takes that out, right? Fills all the sell orders that are sitting there. Then it comes back down to this demand zone that it's at now. The next move, would, um, where is it, let's see, would be likely up to here, okay? Because now we're looking at a different time frame. So that area of demand potentially that we're in right now is here. That supply zone that is still sitting there is up here. But if this gets taken out, now the profit zone would open up from here all the way up to here. And that's what we're looking for. As a day trader, swing trader, longer term investor, make sense? And this is above the highs of uh, just a couple weeks ago. But we need those profit zones to open up. That is the S&P. Uh, let's move on. So we did that. We looked at the NASDAQ. Now let's look at the Russell because the Russell actually has a nice demand zone sitting down here. Let's see if it uh, didn't get there yet today. All right. So the Russell has this area sitting just below in the 1793 area. Now the Russell and the Dow currently are a little bit stronger than that NASDAQ, okay? Uh, Shuben, yeah, I hear what you're saying there, but the Nifty is fantastic. So I think what you're maybe missing is that whole structure location component. Um, and, uh, but we can, we can, you know, we can chat about that in, in time. We can figure something out there. But uh, the Nifty is great because it does gap. It gaps a ton because people make buy and sell. A lot of people make buy and sell decisions uh, on the Nifty based on news. It's just, I don't know, it's just a culture thing. I mean, look, a lot of people around the world make buy and sell decisions based on news. Uh, but I find, just my opinion, I could be wrong. Shuban, you can comment if you like. I could be totally wrong. But from my experience in India, uh, a lot of people make buy and sell decisions based on news. It's just kind of the way a lot of people do things there. So you get these gaps. And what you see is 
prices gap often right into qualified supply zones, qualified demand zones. And that's because there's such an imbalance causing that. So um, anyway, let's keep going. So uh, we'll watch this uh, Russell demand zone. Notice price didn't even get there yet with uh, a lot of that weakness in the market. You know, my sound is a little off here. Let me just, um, let me just, hold on, give me one second here. There we go, sound should be good now. All right, so we'll watch that demand zone there. Now when we say demand, for those that are new with this, you can interchange that word for wholesale, right? This is all just wholesale prices, retail prices, demand, supply. So we have that uh, demand zone right there against the supply or retail prices up here at 1862, okay? So 1862 on the supply side and 1792 on the demand side. And that area I just showed you is right up in here. There's the 1862. I could just put it on one chart to keep it simple. Okay. So again, profit zone not great here. Um, nothing I would be that I would be interested in, but Maybe an active, a very active trader would be. Um, if you're, you know, swing trader or whatever your, you know, what's your minimum risk reward? That needs to be crystal clear in your trading plan. And um, and then make sure you're proficient in knowing what that looks like on a price chart. That's the key there. Okay. All right. So uh, let's keep going. Now let's move over to the Dow. We'll start. Like all of these, we'll start with the futures, and then we'll move over to the ETF. And then after this, we can certainly go to um, the Forex markets or any market that you want to take a look at. You know, before we get to the Dow, I'm seeing a, a number of kind of private questions on what I showed earlier. Let me just pull that up real quick, just so everybody's... Because um, it's important that everybody just focus on the charts. But So let me just kind of address this. This, uh, yeah, this, this, we'll get back to charts in a minute, but I'm getting a lot of questions. So I want to make sure everybody really focus on the charts. So real quick, this new Pinnacle Edge membership, um, a lot of people are saying, is this real? This must be fake, things like that. Like I'm getting a lot of those messages. Anyway, this is something I've wanted to do for years um, because of agreements and legal issues. I have, you know, a lot of people have tried to stop me from doing it, and um, now those barriers are gone. So. Um, these are daily sessions and um, on all the major markets, um, swing trading, after, active trading, stocks, futures, Forex, crypto, um, options, all that. And um, uh, it includes a uh, supply demand basics course and then the live, uh, the live markets. So those sessions that I do in the mornings, um, you'll have access to a number of those in here, and then there are some also some very active trading sessions in here. There's some swing trading sessions in here, and then there's a uh, really cool newsletter that goes out each week with an article, a lesson, and uh, some more picks. Um, anyway, so just wanted to share that one more time here. I'll put the link in the chat, and that way... Um, hopefully that answered any of your questions on that because I saw there were a lot of questions, kind of private questions and messages. And Anyway, there we go. Um, yes, if you want this kind of what we're doing here every day. Um, yeah, so NB, I see your, your question there. Um, there's, there's, if you have a general understanding of the supply demand or what we're talking about here, there's plenty in that foundations course to, uh, and then, you know, and then just being in the live sessions, right? Just in those sessions each day, 
you know, you should be able to get it between that and the course, right? Okay. Let's keep, uh, uh, yeah, we'll get to the FX markets shortly. Um, you know, I don't even know if we need to spend too much time on the Dow. We just went through, if anybody wants me to go through the Dow, just say so in the chat. Otherwise, I can move on to, actually, we can do it in 10 seconds here. Uh, there's our very tested demand zone here in the Dow. This is likely to make new lows. Um, there's that. And that would be against the 32,800 tested supply. Tested supply above, tested demand below. Akira, the foundation course is on demand. So we, um, we actually put a lot of time into um, building that on demand course. And there are plenty of live sessions, though, if you have any questions. But um, we thought it was a better experience to deliver the, we'll go to the Forex markets next, to go to the, uh, actually, I want to show you one bond market level first. We thought it was a better idea, a uh, better experience for you to deliver the foundations course on demand, recorded, because we can deliver it the way it should be delivered there and leave, you know, make sure we get everything right. And because we're delivering something live, if you leave a couple words out here or there, you explain something a little bit different. Um, it maybe doesn't come across as strong. So uh, the foundation supply demand course is on demand. And then, but there's plenty of live sessions if you have any questions. Okay. And uh, ah, Shuban, good question. So we go with the rule of 50%. So if price goes 50% or deeper into the supplier demand zone, we um, we don't uh, we don't take it anymore. Less than 50%, as long as the profit zone is still there, we'll uh, we'll take that or use it, right? Okay. So just want to point out the 30-year does have a. Uh, well, it looks like we hit it already. This is a weekly demand zone that we hit. So we just touched it. So the likelihood is that there's still a significant supply demand imbalance down here. Okay. All right. Let's go to uh, BF. I saw you had a question above. Let's see. Uh, but yeah, you know, those those are likely to be those are likely to be when we say market bottoms, not necessarily to a new all time high. And look, we've said, you know, what I'm going to say next, we, we've said, you know, many times, um, it, it's what the charts are suggesting, right? If I go to, let me pull up the, uh, maybe a larger time, what the, what the equity index, the stock market charts have been suggesting, all of them, is that from the top, right? In fact, if I go to the Qs, you'll see, uh, you'll see here. Not that one. Let me just find it real quick. No. Where is it? There it is. So that's the all-time high in the NASDAQ right there. And that left a big footprint of supply here above all of that. But what the charts are suggesting and have been suggesting, even from here, is that there's not likely to be this big market crash and we're certainly not likely to go back to all-time highs anytime soon, but that the market is likely to slowly grind lower. And um, meaning, and this is exactly what's been happening, we, we, we shift lower and then trade in this range for a few days to a week and a half, and then uh, the supply zones barely get touched. The demand zones get, you know, eventually uh, all the demand gets... Uh, you know, we hit it once and rally, and the next time we go through it, and then down to the next, and then the whole range shifts lower for another week to two weeks. And that range is confined by our supply and demand zones, right? So that's that's what the chart is suggesting is going to continue to happen. Okay. Uh, Abdullah, yes, it does. 
Okay, let's keep going. So um, I can go to any chart. If anybody has a market they want to go to, specific market, just throw it in the chat, and we can go there and cover it. Could be anything, right? When it comes to the strategy, we apply it equally to any market, any time frame, um, stop day trading, swing trading, longer term investing, doesn't matter. All right, let's take a look at gold, and um, no problem. GLD, Zach, and let's take a look at GLD. And with GLD, it's really all going to be about the 60-minute chart here. So let me pull that up. Not that the 60-minute chart is any more important than any other chart, but that happens to be where our, where the evidence is, is, is clear. So let's go there. All right. So GLD, this is the ETF for gold. We're looking at the 171.35 on the supply side, the 166.20 on the demand side. Obviously, price is right in the middle now. Remember, that's where price is going to spend most of its time, in the middle. Supply, demand, and fair value. If you have not had or seen that lesson yet, um, that's, that's the key one. That's the critical one. Okay? So, um, anyway, that, that's where it's at. Meaning, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to, we don't want to be buyers or sellers in the middle. We want to, uh, that's why, look, the majority of active traders lose money. We know that. One of the main reasons is people buy and sell in the middle. They don't buy at wholesale prices and sell at retail prices. All right, let's go to, uh, we can certainly go to the gold futures. Not a problem there. Uh, even here, we can take a look at the 60-minute chart. Okay, There's the 1783, uh, just below that pivot low. And then the 1838, which is sitting just above this pivot high. Remember, we need to stay outside of this. Okay, All of this trading activity in here, we don't want to be buyers and sellers in here. Now, you can do all this as a short-term day trader by doing the same thing we're doing here as... Uh, you know, one minute, two minute, 10 minute, five minute charts, right? Click charts, all that. Um, but, you know, whatever time frame this is, we want to stay out of the middle. Great question there on the trend. Um, we don't, trend really isn't in our vocabulary. Um, one of the, you know, again, if you, if you look at the statistics, right? And I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but, the, the vast majority of active traders lose money. And when you look at what the number one strategy that people use is, um, it's trend, right? So what? why is that? Well, remember, trend traders don't buy at demand or sell at supply. They let prices turn higher at demand, and then they wait for a series of higher highs and higher lows, and then they buy, right? If we go back to this gold chart here, um, there, the trend trader doesn't sell at supply. They let prices turn lower at supply, then they wait for a series of lower highs and lower lows, and then they sell. Okay, so what's the problem? They're buying and selling near the middle. Right, um, and if you think about it, every uptrend begins at demand and ends at supply. Every downtrend ends its begins its supply and ends its demand. So that's that's our focus. Does that make sense? Conventional trend trading is, you know, you're getting in very late, which only increases risk and decreases reward. Uh, again, momentum I see in the chat there. Momentum it's that's all after the fact, right? So we want to focus on look at the, the, the goal of trading, right? Low risk, high reward, high probability. Um, and the way, the only way to attain that is to get in to the market, buy into a market, sell into a market, as close to the turn in price as possible. So the next question is, where are prices most likely to turn? Okay, and that's that leads into, right, the answer to that is, at price levels where supply and demand is most out of balance. And that's why we uh, focus on that. Shubham, uh, just risk-reward. 
right? Whatever your minimum is. And for everyone, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, all right, let's go to the next market. We can look at the dollar. We can look at the euro. We can certainly look at the crypto markets. Some people say, well, wait, the crypto markets are different. It's, they're not. It's just people buying and selling. Um, whatever the actual product or market is, uh, doesn't matter. When we look at Bitcoin, for example, okay, let's take a look. Um, a great chart to start with is a weekly chart. We've looked at this here. We've looked at this chart here many times in our FX Street sessions. And um, prices eventually turn at our larger time frame supply zone up here. They're likely headed to the 22,400 demand. Uh, there's not a whole lot in between there. We've already filled this gap here, right, which is no surprise. But uh, this is where prices are likely headed. And um, unless we create a new demand zone higher than this, this currently is, is the likely turning point. Um, it's where that lower risk, high reward, higher probability entry is likely to be. Does that make sense? I know that's kind of far from current price, but, but that's what the charts are suggesting. You'll see here, even if we go um, down, couple time frames you know we already you may look at that and say wait a second there's demand yeah but we already had our bounce from here and look at how deep price went into there we have we were look we looked at this demand zone we had it but you've already had your bounce okay so the next likely stopping point is here and um, let's just make sure those are uh, this one okay but actually just a touch lower. Um, so we probably want to bring that a little bit down here, closer to closer to closer to 22,000. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's go to the euro and let's take a look. Uh, actually, if it's okay, I want to start with this dollar chart. And what we have here in a very large time frame, okay, um, the 106.25 area. And remember, this has been a level. We've literally looked at this for, we brought this zone up couple times a year for the last few years here in this FX Street session. Just, the, just that it's there to keep an eye on it. And, um, and what's been interesting this year is, and you can see the year really, you know, last year we were down here to the demand and then we have another demand zone here and more demand zones along the way, right? On the way up, we just turned it another one. Um, most people around the world, most of the experts, right, have been very bearish the dollar this year. Uh, and so you'd be very careful with that. Um, and those of you who've been in these sessions for a while, you know, you've heard this before, but no matter what anybody is saying, and I do mean anybody, myself included, just any Fed official out there, any, you know, every, any government official, any, any big name from a bank, you can always filter what anyone is saying, anyone's opinion through what the chart is saying. What you'll find from my experience is that the chart, the chart doesn't lie. The chart is always right. Right. Yeah, they've been saying that all year long. But the chart has been saying the opposite. The chart has been saying dollar has demand zones below and no supply above till about that 106 area. Uh, you, Michael, you could definitely have, yeah, definitely zones, um, other zones can develop. Mm -hmm. Now, look, the reason we look at multiple time frames, it's not that one time frame is better than any other or anything like that. The purpose of looking at multiple time frames is, uh, you know, we're, we're just looking for the evidence that helps show us where the significant supply demand imbalances are. That's what's so important. Okay. Because again, at the end of the day, price is most likely to turn at price levels 
where you have your significant supply demand imbalance. And that, that's what the strategy is all about. Uh, I want to share this zone with you here. And um, so typically, according to our rules, the zone would be right here. But um, we always enter the position just before the zones, just because when you come to a high probability zone, often price can turn right before it. So our rules have us entering just before the zone. Anyway, uh, right around the 104, let's see here, is that, yeah, about 10, yeah. Right around the 104.60 is where uh, we could see the euro turning higher and coming back up into all this and potentially going a little bit higher from there, which would mean, you know, dollar uh, rally and, uh, and, and drop. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, there's that one. And oh, on that note, I just saw the, the uh, clock here. I know we're out of time. Uh, but anyway, a lot of questions, a lot of private questions in the chat about the new membership. And uh, yeah, we wanted to do something that I've wanted to do this for a long time because um, just price points in the industry have been so high and they don't need to be. And um, but uh, there's a lot of uh, you know people and reasons and things just just keeping those prices high. So we're able to break out of that here. And um, anyway, there you go. Uh, so I can put the link in the chat here for you if you like. You want to do kind of what we're doing here on more of an everyday basis uh, and have the course around it. Newsletters should be great. And um, uh, anyway, there you go. Good spending time. Uh, be careful with that trading. Remember, no one's pushing anyone to trade their own accounts. Um, well, a lot of people do push people, but don't let people push you into that. Make sure you dive in when you're ready. Make sure you understand the risk you're getting involved in. And I'm not saying that because I have to, because I already said it. Um, just too many people are losing money. So let's do everything we can to turn that around. All right. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. And um, see you soon. Great.